Hello, hello. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening. How are you doing, Joe? Great day off. Nice. That's that's <laughs> really nice. That's really nice. Actually drinking coffee. Oh, that's really good. I had I had a coffee. I think I'm a little bit old school because <laughs> I, I drink my coffee like between three and four PM. Yeah, me too. Oh, if I drink coffee at 8 p.m., Joe, that's it. I, I can't go to sleep. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I keep going to the bathroom. Oh, my goodness. Everything. <laughs> Everything happens. So 3 to 4 p.m. for the coffee. Lucky you. Lucky you. I can't sleep without coffee. Oh, my God. That, that, that is great. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something that I would want to definitely do. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Good to hear. Hi. How you doing? Welcome to Wednesday. Oh, también se conoce como hum day. It's right in the middle of the week. Welcome, welcome, Anna. Hello, good evening. Hello, hello, Fer. Nice seeing you again. Claudia, welcome to class. Hello. Good evening, everybody. All right. Um, I, th I think that's, that's pretty much it. Usually we only get about maybe six or seven people coming in. So I think we're ready to get started. Well, welcome. This is week number three and we are on day number three tomorrow is going to be our last day of week three and then we're going to go into our week number four which is our final week how are you guys doing with the platform elisa hola buenas Good evening, welcome. Let me see here. By show of hands or thumb. How are you guys doing with the platform? ¿Cómo le va con el trabajo de la plataforma? Good, really good. Good, all right. Good, good, good. Yes, teacher, good. Nice. Okay. Nice to hear that, nice to hear that. Okay, let me go ahead and start sharing and tell you guys what the plan is for today. Busy, busy Wednesday for us. I hope you guys like it. Let me go ahead and get this one moved a little bit. Okay, so we are still on section four. If you guys have moved ahead well done, good for you. We as a class are still here. So some of this, some of this information might be repeat for you guys, but I want you to take it as a review. If you guys have already completed some of these exercises, look it as a review and a chance for you guys to practice. And so um, we have been working on tenses past continuous versus simple past. We had um, started doing the perfect, uh, past perfect, which was part of uh, le lesson 4.8. And so today we're moving into past perfect positives and negatives. Now, 
I want you guys to know that even though it seems y aunque parezca que son diferentes las lecciones, they are all the same. They all fall under the same category, la misma categoría, que es los tenses. And remember that it could be past tense, it could be a present tense, and it could be a future tense. And so the way that they are set up is they want us to practice individually, each one of these. But in reality, if you guys look at what we're covering, it's, it's pretty much the same tenses that we go over and over. And um, the reason for that is that they're very common. Some of them are more common than others. And so what we decided to do is kind of put all the most common use tenses and then divide those into the, into the different lessons. Y por eso es que las lecciones salen así. Aunque parezca que, ay, vamos a ver otra vez esto. It, it's actually the same thing. Except um, using maybe a, a different word, uh, using them in, in a negative form, or using them as a question. But every time you guys see a tense, usually you will see pretty much everything that is being covered in the lessons anyways. So, por eso es que se siente como que es un poco re, uh, repetido, pero en realidad eh, son los diferentes formatos que uno ocupa. So, different form, different ways of using the tenses, and they're very common. So, ojo con eso, no se vayan a dejar uh, llevar. Eh, porque sí hay pequeñas diferencias entre uno y el otro. Entonces, it, it's, it's very important for you guys to kind of get used to them. Um, I think one of the one of the main items that people listen to is how you use your tenses, how you use your past tense, your present and your future tenses. And so based on that, they pretty much can get an idea of how well you can or cannot communicate. Because it, it, it's very hard to talk about the past if you don't know how to use the word. So, um, ojo con eso, ojo con eso. Okay, so for us, we're gonna go back into reading comprehension. And for this one, I looked for a story that has a different level of learning. And so uh, we're gonna start off with the reading comprehension exercises. We're gonna move into the tense reviews and then we're gonna uh, focus on the past perfect continuous. And I have some exercises for us that we can read and kind of try to see if we can get that pronunciation going. Okay, once again, this particular story is a little bit harder. It incorporates uh, different words. So it's a little bit more challenging. Um, I'm gonna give you guys three minutes to read it and then we're going to go back into the question exercise that we usually do from the web. Okay? So here we go, guys. Here is your reading exercise. Can everybody see it okay? Yes. Fantastic. All right. Your three minutes start right now.
How are you doing? I think it was a quick read. Did you guys, are you guys still reading? Or was that enough time? Yeah. Um, guys, we're good, we're good? Okay, so let's let's go back to it. So now I really like this, I, I really like this one. I really like this uh, story. Let me see here. Now, let me tell you that this story is pretty close to, to my heart because when I am in, for example, when I am given a class, um, remember I told you guys that I was, that I used to work, well, that I work in these diff different call centers. And so based on some of these stories, right, this one I like the most because you never know, you never know what's going to happen in the future. And um, I had a, fr well, I had a friend come, on, come to one of my classes and I provided the class and, you know, it, it falls on me to either pass a person based on their English level. Um, they either, they either pass the next section of the training or hasta ahí llegaron, ¿verdad? And then, so they have to take a course for English. They have to go back to maybe 90 days of classes and then they have to come back again and try everything all again. And so I had one of my friends come into one of my classes and he told me, he said, hey, look, I have an, I have an accent. Uh, I can understand the English that, you know, that I'm speaking. I can understand people. And you will have no problems with a customer telling me, oh, I can't understand. Because even though I have an accent, the words that I choose are, are you know, right on. I just want you to give me the chance to prove myself. And, and you know what? And I told him, yeah, you know what? You're, you're right. Because accent is not part of communication. Así es que, por favor, recuerden eso. Usted puede tener un acento bien fuerte. Your accent does not, and it is not part of communication. Entonces, si ustedes, si alguien le dice, pucha, te, te escucha bien, bien macheteado, it's okay, because it's part of your accent. You are bilingual, and... You are supposed to have an accent. We all have accents, right? And so with time, that accent, um, I want to say that it, it, it doesn't disappear. Se hace más pequeño, but it's always there, okay? Uh, you can say that an accent is heavy or it's light, but there's always an accent. So I told him, you know what, you're right. And then so I gave him the chance, and I told him, you know what, I'm going to pass you, and, and let's go try it out. And sure enough, the first month, the second month, third, you know, after three months on the phones, he was one of the top performers. And that was a very, very long time ago. Um, one of these days, I, I put a note out on LinkedIn. Ya han ocupado ustedes ese, ese site. Bueno, no sé si es un site o una aplicación. Se llama LinkedIn. ¿Ya lo han escuchado? Creo que sí. It's like a social media. It's like, okay, okay. So then I put there, I, you know, I put my resume. I was looking for a little part-time job. And I received, I received a call back. And, and guess who had called me? Guess who was calling me? Your friend at the course. My friend. My friend who I, yeah, he was, he, um, he became a manager in another, uh, in another call center. And so he wanted to use my services and you know he gave me like a little job it, it was maybe you know maybe one hour per day but you just never know and so that's why i absolutely love this story uno nunca sabe cuando es el león ¿verdad? y cuando es el ratón entonces tenés que tenés que pasar por la vida tomando eso en cuenta uno nunca sabe cuando uno va a estar abajo o cuando uno va a estar arriba así que you know um, I, I really, really, absolutely like the story for, for that. So now, because I liked it so much, right? Um, I, I, I read it a few times. And so for you guys, a ver, here we go. Eight questions. The lion was tired from chasing his prey. What does prey mean? The animals he tries to catch and eat. The animals he tries to catch and eat. 
Anybody disagree? Okay, let's go with that Yes. One. Yeah. yeah, we got it. That's it, pray. Next, the mice went to sleep under a... Under a tree. Under a tree? Does anybody yeah. disagree? Okay, let's go with tree. Yeah, you guys got it, okay. Next one. <clears throat> While he slept, what animal scrambled over him? Miss? This one Mice. here. Mice. 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 Ahora, ahora. There is rats, but usually rats are really big. I, I know we, we usually say rats and they, they, it's the same thing. So it's rats and mice. Mice would be the little ones, right? El, el ratoncito, los pequeñitos, y las ratas son las grandes, las cholas. All right, so mice. There we go. Next one. The lion laid his paw on a poor mouse. What is a paw? A lion's foot, tail, or rock? A lion's foot. A lion's foot. Anybody disagree? No? All right. Got that out. Next one. The mouse begged. What did the mouse beg for? For, for mercy. mercy. For mercy. For mercy. Okay. Mercy, mercy. There we go. Piedad sería, right? In Spanish, piedad. Okay. All right. A few days later, the lion was. Caught in a hunter's trap and unable to get out. Caught in a hunter's trap and unable to get out. All right. There we go. When he heard the lion roar, a mouse that the lion had let go came to help. How could a mouse help? He could chew the ropes. He could chew the rope and let the lion go free. There we go. Yes. This one here, chew. There we go. And last question. The lesson is that we should not look down on... Friends who do not seem to be important or strong. Friends who do not seem to be important or strong. Okay, let's go here. All right, that's 100% on the story. Nice. Way to go, everybody. And remember, this applies to what we do in our work, in our uh, environment. Always try to be really, really nice. Okay, let me go. In, in well, in in life in general, right? I think try to be try to be as nice as possible. Por ejemplo, cuando ustedes me me conozcan en verdad, ustedes van a ver que I'm really nice, right? Really, really, really. Doy billete de cien a lo loco. No mentira, no doy billete de cien. Okay, all right. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, way to go, way to go. Well done. We go into our presentation and let's talk about some of that. We have the lion and the mouse, and then we start off with past perfect. And this one here, the lesson was the use of positive and negative. Okay. Now, the use of positive and negatives is focused on one item, right? But when you look for this information online or when you go into an, on, an online class, 
it's very general because the idea is first you have to understand how to use past perfect, how to formulate it, how to create the words, and then you can begin to use them in like the different forms, okay? In the positive, in the negative, or asking a question. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna focus in general, okay? And then we're gonna to touch up a little bit on positive and negative. It's not that much of a difference, by the way. Okay, si ustedes se recuerdan, tenemos 12 tenses. Tenemos cuatro. We have four, which are the past tenses. Simple past, and the examples of words that you should use for simple past are, I went, I laughed. The next one is past progressive. O también, se con, también lo pueden escuchar como past continuous. Past continuous, past progressive, same thing. Example, I was going. I was laughing. And notice how we use the words, right? Then we have past perfect. And for past perfect, we talked that we used and incorporated the word had. So as you guys can see, I had gone and I had laughed are the examples that we have. Then we have past perfect progressive. And this one uses had, but it incorporates another word which is been, I had been going, or I had been laughing. And these are the examples for the past tense. Then we come into the present or the now. And so these, one, these you guys can find, these are a little bit easier. Simple present, I go, I laugh, present progressive, I am going, or I am laughing. Present perfect, I have gone, or I have laughed. And present perfect progressive, I have been, and I have been laughing. Perdón, I have been going, and I have been laughing. So even though it seems like it's maybe not correct, it's actually the best way to say it. And then we have the final four, which is simple future. I will go, I will laugh. Future progressive, I will be going or I will be laughing. Future perfect, I will have gone or I will have laughed. And future perfect progressive, which is I will have been going and I will have been laughing as the example. So four, eight, 12 all together, okay? And then you guys can see we have a different variation of words that we can use. And I, I, was, I was actually gonna talk to you guys about some of the words that you guys can use, but it's a lot. So uh, I decided to maybe just leave it as simple as possible. And so how is it that it works? Well, past perfect. Remember we were talking about Past perfect, and because we're using them in a positive and a negative, we're going to focus on this one. And the idea of using past perfect is only using and adding the word had. But now, in this particular case, what we're doing is we're talking about something that we were doing, like an activity, and then another activity that popped in. So, for example, John had baked a cake before you arrived. So John was doing something and then all of a sudden somebody got there. Okay. John had baked a cake before you arrived. And then there it is. They had painted the fence before I had a chance to speak to them. Okay. Had painted the fence 
before I got there and I had a chance to speak to them. Now, if you notice, when you guys are doing past perfect, we always have the have and then the word right next to it, take it. And so in this particular sentence example, we have Silver Finger had taken the pill before the team reached him. And so the explanation is he took the pill first. And right after that, the team reached him. And so that is the way to look at it when you guys are reading a past perfect tense or when you guys are using it. I had called the police before I investigated the noise in the garden. What was the first thing I did? I called the police. What was the next thing you did? I investigated the noise. And then so you find those two right here. The weather changed, but the team had planned its next move. First, the team planned, and next, the weather had changed. So we have this and vice versa, but it's still the same rule. Here is the formula. Actually, very easy. If you guys are talking about past tense, you will incorporate the word had every single time. You have to use the word had. And then you will put that together with a past participle. In this example, we have had and we were using jump. But since we're talking about the past, now it's going to be had jumped or had met past perfect everybody okay so far i think this one this one we have been covering we have seen it a few times already okay let me give you guys some examples of when to change and use those participles how do I know, teacher, how do I know cuando tengo yo que cambiar o agregar, por ejemplo, la ed? ¿Cómo sé yo cuando voy a agregar solo la d o una doble, una, una, una letra doble, por ejemplo? Okay, so let me, let me talk to you guys about that. Okay, so let's say we have verbs, right? And this happens in this rule is for most of the verbs. Entonces, para la mayoría de los verbos, most of the verbs, okay? If you have a verb, jump, for example, all you have to do is add an ed. And that becomes a past participle and it becomes jumped. Paint, you add ED and it becomes painted. And those are easy, right? Because you know, they're very common. Also, you have to keep in mind that these are regular verbs. There is also irregular verbs. And so for those, it's a little bit more complicated, but these are regular verbs and it's the most common verbs that we use. Okay. Now, if you have a verb and the syllable, one syllable ends on the rule C, B, C, which is a consonant, a vowel, and a consonant, then the final consonant, you can add the ED. So oh, if you guys want to do chatted, for example, as you guys can see, we have the double T, but 
the original word that we were using was chat. And so we have the H, which is with this, that, you know, it's a consonant sound. We have an A, which is a vowel, and then it ends with a T, which is a consonant again. So this is the, this is the CVC rule, así se llama. C for consonant, V for, for vowel, and then C for consonant again. And so what happens is that the word has put a lock on that vowel. And because of that, you double the final T. In this case, well, it, it should be the final consonant, but here it is the T that gets doubled. And so when you create the new word, you have to add the other T, and then you add the ED, and it becomes chatting. Same thing happens to stop, because now it is stopped, and it has double Ps, and then the ED. Okay. If the final consonant is a W, X, or Y, you don't use the double. You just add the ED. And so, for example, if you're saying so, you can say sued. If you are saying play, now you can say played. And if you're using the word fix, now you can use fix. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. It's okay. Yes, teacher. Okay, cool. All right. So there is... There is another rule when it comes to the longer verbs and are stressed in the end. And if that is consonant, vowel, consonant, you double the last consonant again and then you add the E. For example, the word incurred. C you are because it's the c b c rule when you turn it into a part in a past participle you will add another r before adding the ed same thing happens to prefer when you say the word preferred you have double r's and then we add the ed Okay. If the first syllable is longer or it's a longer verb and it's stressed, but it ends with the CBC, then all you need to do is add the ED. For example, for open, you will say opened with one end. You will say entered with one R. And you are going to say swallowed with one W. There's no need to add another one there. Opened, entered, swallowed. Now, if that verb ends with an E, all we have to do is add a D. So you guys have to look at the word. And if you see that that letter ends with an E, then all you have to do is add the D. For example, thrive or guzzle. Thrived and guzzled are the words that we're going to use. Now, if the verb ends in the consonant plus the Y, we are going to change the Y to an I and then add the ED. For example, cry. We are going to say cried. And we are going to say fried instead of fry. Cried, fried. And so these are the rules when turning a regular verb into a past participle. 
And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And it becomes so easy that, you know, you automatically do it. As soon as you see the word and you, and you say it, you will automatically say, well, you know what? I chatted with her yesterday. And you will automatically create the, uh, the past participle. The more you use them, the better you get. Okay, so now the negative version. Well, you, got, you, guys, you guys pretty much have the idea. Entonces, todo lo que hemos estado hablando en este momento, esto que acabamos de ver del past perfect tense, cuando tú dices, John had baked the cake before you arrived, that is positive. So everything that you guys have seen so far has been the positive of past perfect. And the only thing you need to make it a negative is add one little word. ¿Qué palabra es la que se agrega para hacerlo negativo? Not. Not. That is correct. Now, the word that we use is had not. But you guys will see this as being a contraction. And you guys will see it as hadn't. Hadn't. Not hadn't. Had not. And then you use the past participle that you have chosen or the best one that fits what you want to say. So we took the positive version and now we're going to make it negative. And the only thing we did was add not. Lo único que tenés que hacer. Entonces, la misma, same sentence. Silver Finger had not taken the pill before the team reached them. Ooh, ¿Qué quiere decir eso, though? In the other sentence, él se tomó la píldora y luego llegó el equipo y lo cacharon. And so it was too late. They were late. But this one is different. Porque no logró tomarse la pastillita. He did not. He had not taken the pill before the team. Okay? I had not called the police before I investigated the noise in the garden. The weather changed and the team had not planned its next move. And we took the positives. Y lo único que hicimos fue agregamos la palabrita not. Y ahora se cambió por completo. Y es la versión negativa. The negative form. Is everybody okay with that? ¿Alguna pregunta que tengan? Super fácil, ¿verdad? En este, en este caso es super fácil para hacer el past perfect negative. Si ustedes ven algún ejercicio con una past perfect in positive form, the only difference between those and the negatives ¿Qué es? ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre una de esas que es positiva y la versión negativa de esa? De la misma sentence. The word not. The word not. That's it. Super fácil. Super fácil. All right. Okay, good. And of course, we get to the questions. And so, with the questions, we have... I want to say that you can, you can focus maybe on the yes, no questions. Son las más fáciles. It's the easiest one. And what you do is you switch the had. And so you start off with had instead of the subject. Y le da vuelta. Si ustedes se fijan, in the previous sentences, the subject was first, and then we had included the had or the had not. En esta, we start off with had, and we say, had Silver Finger taken the pill before the team reached him? And we can answer with no. No, he had not taken the pill. Or yes, he had already taken the pill. 
yes or no, right? You also have the question word, for example, why? Why had Silver Finger taken the pill before the team reached him? Oh, well, somebody told him to take it. That's why he took the pill. So we have the positive, we have the negative, and we also have the question format using the question word. In this particular case, we use either why or where. You can also use when, right? Well, it, you can pretty much use anything. Okay. Do you guys have any questions before we move into the contractions? Just to give you a heads up, porque si se ocupan y ustedes lo van a ver. So, contraction, for example, like hat. Any questions? Everybody good? Everybody good? Okay. Everything is good. Yes, it's sure. Everything's okay. Okay. Now, there are two types of contractions. We have the use of the apostrophe, which is the example here of would have. And we have compressing or truncating words. And so we are only going to focus on apostrophes, but just to give you guys a little, you know, a little uh, trailer here, when you compress or truncate a word, you use the dot, okay? The example that we see here is captain. And so you remove the A, the I, and the N, and you put the dot and you leave C-A-P-T, and that becomes Captain. And you can say Captain America, for example, right? I don't know if you guys have seen that sometimes you, they spell it like this, Capt America, because it stands for Captain America. Now, we're not gonna focus on this one, we're gonna focus on the apostrophe. So, what are the most common ones that you guys will see and use? I had. I had, the contraction is I did, with a D, 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 I did. You had is you'd. He had, he'd. She had, she'd. It had, it. We had, we. They had, they. Now, there is a lot of contraction. There is many ways that you can do contraction. You just have to keep in mind that we're talking about the apostrophe here. Okay? And so depending on how you see this, when you see the I apostrophe D, that is I had. You had, he had, she had, it had, we had, and they had. And these are all example of what? What are these examples of? What are we doing? Past perfect. Past perfect. Past perfect. And so you know that because here's the word had. So when you guys are using past perfect, you guys will see this one again and again. Had, had, had. Okay, so we're moving on to our exercise. And our exercise, this one is, this one is heavy duty. Let's see, what? Oh my goodness, here it is. This one is, como, dec como decimos nosotros, este está heavy. All right. But at the same time, it is also pretty good because it, it provides us with the necessary exercises to practice. Okay. So in this particular case, we are using past perfect and simple past. Okay. Simple past 
and past perfect. So let me go back over here and show you where that is at. Simple past and past perfect. Simple past, we have words like I went and I left. And past perfect, I had gone and I had left. So keep that in mind, keep that in mind. All right, going back over here. Okay. So here on the first exercise, we start off with reading the sentences and then we circle the correct answer or we can choose the correct word to use. And I want you guys to read the sentence and then come back and tell me what word should we, should we be using, okay? And so the story, the young man's parents called the police after he had been gone for three days. The boy had drunk the liquid from all the contact lens cases when they found him. The boy didn't tell his story until he had drunk a lot of water. Okay. Then we start with one and two, and here is the sentence. We, blank, use the past perfect and the simple past in the same sentence. And you get to choose either can or can't, cannot. For sentence number one, can we use the past perfect and the simple past in the same sentence? Or we can't? Which one do you think it is? Can or can't? What should I put? We can. We can. Okay. Does anybody disagree with that? No. Going once. No, going twice. Okay, we're going to leave it at that. So listen to how it sounds. We can use the past perfect and the simple past in the same sentence. Okay? All right. We use the for the action that was completed first. We use the simple past or we use the past perfect for the past action. Perfect. Past perfect, I heard. Past perfect. Okay. Does anybody disagree with that? No? All right. Okay, so now we move into circling the correct answer. I want you guys to read that and just tell me which one do you want me to select, either A or B. All right. Read through the sentence and choose and then tell me. Studied her map for a long time. After Jen had studied her map for a long time, she had decided to do oh, oh, okay. So let me see. So no, after, after Jen, Jen studied, after Jen studied her map for a long time, she had decided to turn left. Yeah. Everybody agree? I think I think both are in simple past. I think started and decided. Okay. So I you guys decided, say decided. But the difference is that just the hat decided is that the past perfect of of half of decided. Sorry. Well, when you say had. Right. Remember that had is the past. Perfect. Right. And decided in this case is the simple past. Letter B. Letter B. Is the right. All right. Let me try. Let me try letter B. I know that some of you guys said A, 
So if I choose B and then A is correct, I apologize. Oh, I, I didn't understand. I, I think, yeah. Okay. I understood so, now. Okay. For me, it's letter A. Okay. So I, I owe you a coffee if you get it right. And if I, I get it right, then you guys owe me a coffee. <laughs> All right. After Jen, let's try it out. Let's try out with B. After Jen had studied her map for a long time, she decided to turn left. Okay. And then we have also after Jen studied her map for a long time, she had decided to turn left. Ooh, that one's pretty close. Okay. Number three. Take a look at it and tell me A or B. Letter B two. Letter, Letter B. B. Okay. And number four. Letter B. Letter B. Letter B as well? Yeah. All right. The skiers family got worried only after the avalanche had happened. By the time my father called, I had left the party. Okay. All right. Let me see if we have there's some more here that we can. Okay. Well, let's. I think we could do the we could do the answers for this one. Dun dun dun. dun. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that was close. Can was right. Past perfect was right. We have B had studied. B got. And number four was A. So it should have sounded like this. By the time my father had called, I left the party. Yes. All right. All right. So now it sounds like it's not correct, but it, but it is. By the time my father had called, I left the party. Okay. All right. So going back, you guys, to our template, that exercise and all the exercises that we just completed, these were done under section four. And that was for passive overview, past perfect, positive and negative statements. And we also covered the question. And if you guys did the videos, it's actually these, uh, the past perfect is actually pretty short. And the positive and negative is just the video explaining on what it is. But the passive overview, this one's a little bit longer. Once you guys complete the videos, you go to knowledge check 4.11 and it's going to ask you to form some of these. And so what they ask you to do is to use simple past and past progressive or past perfect, depending on the sentence. And so they show you the sentence. And then you have to write it down. Please be careful because it's going to ask you for some dots. Sometimes it doesn't ask you for dots. Sometimes it does ask you for dots. So if you guys are using the dots, if you guys are using something, for example, had left and you put the dot, it might give you an error. Just remove the dot and then go back and put had left and you guys should be okay. Once you guys complete this knowledge check, you guys are going to be over and done with section four. And we are going to 
we are going to move into section five. And that's how we started. So my plan was that because we still have one more week, my plan was for tomorrow to do two things, to do a quick review of the items that we have covered so far, and also see if we can practice some role plays. How do you guys feel about practicing some role plays? Well, the, the role plays are very, very easy. Let me, let me show you. I don't know if we did this one together yet, but let me show you, let me show you. Let me show you. Really, really easy. Uh, let me see here. And this, is, and this is just to help you guys with the conversation, right? How you sound in a conversation and how we can help you with the pronunciation of the word. And so, um, one of us will be the principal, and all you have to do is read this. And then whatever word you need help on, we will work on it in terms of, you know, doing the pronunciation and saying it fluently. I have a couple of these exercises with role plays, but I can't do the role play by myself. I need, you know, I need volunteers. So uh, that's why I was asking you if you guys feel comfortable, if you guys would feel comfortable doing some role plays tomorrow. And yeah, then, it, would that be all right? Is everybody, everybody okay with that? Now, remember, you don't have to participate. It's not, it's not by force, right? But remember that if the more you practice, the more you practice, the better you get. And we're almost family. We have been together for almost, you know, for three weeks. That makes us, <laughs> That makes us almost family. Cuando te dice alguien, mira, déjame quedarme ahí en tu casa un ratito, ¿cuánto tiempo los dejan quedarse? Un día, dos días. Al tercer día lo estás echando. ¿Verdad? Pero nosotros llevamos conviviendo tres semanas. So that's a long time. Three weeks. All right, so keep that in mind. All right, everybody. Um, we're going to call it a night. And please keep in mind that tomorrow, uh, we're going to leave section five for next week. Tomorrow, we're going to do a quick review of the material that we have covered so far. And we're going to do the role play exercises. Woohoo, teacher. Woohoo. Que contento, okay. lo veo. Que contento, lo veo. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I am happy. <laughs> I am very happy. I can see that. I can hear that. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Good evening. Good evening. Bye-bye. Good, good, good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night.